Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. William Lee, and today we're diving into the surprising truth about fat burning. As you age, fat burning becomes even more important for you. Understanding how your body processes fats and the impact of specific foods can be eye-opening for anyone looking to shed pounds or improve their metabolic health. I will unveil the science behind fat metabolism and share my personal top five favorite foods that can help accelerate your body's fat burning capabilities. So join me as we uncover the science behind fat burning and discover practical ways to incorporate these powerhouse foods into your diet. How do people melt the fat, Dr. Lee? <laughs> we are, we're living in a time now where half the population almost is not just overweight, but obese. How do we solve this? You know, there's a lot to unpack in that question. Uh, and I want, I like to start by basically saying that my book, Eat to Beat Your Diet, the title is a little bit of a trick title because it's not a diet book. It's kind of an anti-diet book to say how we can actually improve our metabolism, fight body fat, and actually elevate our health, which is the real goal, our inner health, without ever having to go on a diet. Mm. So saying that, I can tell you that the whole idea about body fat, it's loaded. The word fat is actually a real loaded term. In our society, it's um, associated with a lot of negative connotations, right? Um, when you think about fat, it's usually something not that you don't want. Even if you walk by the butcher section of the grocery store, you see that rind of fat around a steak. Yeah, you know, you'd rather not have that, right? Um, but it turns out, and this is what I write about, that there's a new science to the body that gives us new appreciation of what fat actually does and how that connects to our metabolism in ways that we never thought actually existed. So that fat itself is not a harmful entity when you've got too much and you got obesity, it is harmful. But up until that point, actually fat, believe it or not, is a human organ. Mm. It's an organ as important as your pancreas, your liver, your spleen, your heart, your lungs. And it actually fulfills very, very important purposes for our everyday health connected to our metabolism. And most people think about fat as something that grows on you. And when you see it, you don't like it. So we all went through this. We've all gone through this, right? Get up in the morning, take a shower, step out of the shower, out of the corner of your eye. You see in the mirror a lump or a bump that you don't want to be there, right? That's what makes you think about body fat. But actually, most people don't think about the fact that body fat actually existed before we were born. Hmm. And that leads us, I'm a scientist, so I like to ask origin stories. Where does fat come from? And fat starts in the womb. In fact, body fat is crucial during fetal development. It acts as a cushion and energy reserve for the growing fetus, helping to regulate body temperature and provide essential nutrients. After birth, fat continues to play a critical role. It supports brain development in infants, acts as an energy source, and is vital for the proper functioning of hormones and the immune system. As we grow, our body fat serves multiple functions beyond just storing excess calories. It releases hormones like leptin, which helps regulate appetite and energy balance, and adiponectin, which improves our sensitivity to insulin and reduces inflammation. This dynamic role of fat showcases its importance in maintaining our health. However, the issue arises when we accumulate excessive fat, especially visceral fat, which surrounds our organs. This type of fat is linked to various health problems, including type two diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and certain cancers. Therefore, it's essential to understand how to manage and maintain healthy body fat levels. And let me tell you something about brown fat. It's absolutely fascinating because only recently have we discovered that humans have not just a little brown fat, but a lot of brown fat. And brown fat is different than white fat because it's not jiggly. It's not lumpy, bumpy, jiggly. It's not under your arm. And it's not definitely not subcutaneous. You can't see it. It's mm. not under the skin. Brown fat is paper thin, wafer thin. Okay, so wow. think about it. Fat as thin? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. That seems to be a contradiction in terms. But yeah, brown fat are thin sheets, and it's not close to the skin when you can't see it. It's close to the bone. Mm. All right? It's deep. And it actually is plastered around our neck, 
plastered underneath our breastbone, around like a girdle around our, our chest under our arms, a little bit in the back, a little bit in your belly scattered, okay? And that fat has space heater function. Wow. It's like a nuclear plant that can fire up when it's stimulated in order to burn energy. So it really actually activates your metabolism. And as it does that, it needs fuel, mm -hmm. right? The space heater needs power. It needs gas. Um, it needs to get fuel. Where does it draw the fuel? Where does brown fat draw the fuel from? Brown fat draws its fuel to burn from white fat. Mm. So brown fat is good fat that can fight white fat when it's bad fat. Fat versus fat. Wow. Another another totally interesting thing that you would you can actually think about fighting fat with fat. It's like a civil war happening in your own body. Uh, yeah, exactly. E except that you basically they're all they all started out being friends and all started out creating kind of a peaceful society. Yeah, well, the, they should. I mean, ideally, we'll return to that. So, how do we then? You've mentioned what brown fat does, and you, you mentioned where it tends to uh, habitate in the body. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we stoke that fire, and how do we encourage its proliferation if it's so good for us? Can we even do that? Yeah. Well, look, I, I want to tell you a little story about how brown fat in humans was discovered because it's so fascinating. I, I think that there's so much to be learned about the origin stories and the history of things because it just gives us a better appreciation that this isn't just a trend or a fad. This is something real that was discovered over time. Okay, so in the um, 1700s, uh, there was a... Um, uh, a naturalist, you know, kind of somebody who studies nature named Conrad Gessner. He lives in Switzerland and he was really interested in understanding animals and the anatomy of animals. So he, he uh, was actually taking a look at um, a rodent that lived in the Swiss mountains uh, that um, uh, would hibernate and he would catch one and dissect it. And you know, like they do in the old school they, they, they would draw the organs. And he found one organ that was between the shoulder blades. And he didn't know what it was. Brown colored, but didn't look like anything else that was out there. Well, fast forward, actually, um, uh, a professor at UCLA took a look at that, I mean, over time, and started to really, we had, there were more uh, sophisticated lab tools, and said, you know what, that brown thing actually is made out of fat. Hmm. And the idea of this is that they thought maybe it was something only in hibernating animals. So then they started to find it in bats and other kind of animals that actually hibernate. Okay. And they said, well, I wonder if it's in humans. Fast forward a little bit further, they found it in babies, human babies. You know where they found it in human babies? Right. Just like in this rodent in Switzerland, they found it between the shoulder blades. Hmm. When babies are born, there's a little lump of brown fat um, that actually is there. Wow. Now, what did they figure out that brown fat did in hibernating animals? Is that when the animals are uh, surviving over the winter, they need they need a space heater. So brown fat fires up and keeps them warm. All right. Now, what now what about human babies? Why do we have that? Is it a relic of evolution? Um, you know, look, babies are born in delivery suites. We can put them into incubators. You know, they're in warm homes. Uh, why do we need them? So the idea that was originally thought is, you know, it's just maybe vestigial, like an appendix, all right, which we know now it actually has a function because it actually harbors gut microbiome as well. Right. All right. So you don't want to be, or your tonsils, mm. right? Like people used to say, let's whip out the tonsils, whip out the appendix. No, no, no. Like that, they're actually form, they're actually important components of our body. Just like the appendix and tonsils, brown fat has an essential role. As scientists delved deeper, they discovered that brown fat helps regulate body temperature in infants who can't shiver to generate heat. This thermogenic function is crucial for their survival in the early stages of life. As adults, brown fat continues to play a role, especially in cold conditions where it helps maintain core temperature by burning calories. Interestingly, research has shown that it's possible to increase brown fat activity through certain activities like exposure to cold and regular physical exercise. Cold showers, ice baths, and even living in cooler environments can stimulate brown fat. Similarly, regular exercise has been found to convert some white fat into brown fat-like cells, enhancing overall metabolic health. A lot of people talk about the health properties of vegetables. Of course, you promote all kinds of vegetables which have different impacts on the body. But some of the time we're told to sprinkle 
or pour some olive oil onto the vegetables because it helps us absorb nutrients from them. What's your perspective on that in view of what you've just said about oil and, you know, perhaps not over consuming it, even though it can be healthy? Yeah, well, there's two, let's unpack that because there's two things that you were describing. One is that in plants, let's take a tomato as a great example. Uh, there are natural substances, natural chemicals uh, like lycopene. Lycopene is a carotenoid. It helps to make the tomato red. Um, it has lots and lots of healthful properties. It's a powerful antioxidant. I've studied lycopene in the laboratory and it actually can help starve cancers by cutting off the blood supply. Um, it can slow the shortening of telomeres uh, to slow cellular aging. And it, and it can protect our DNA from even sunlight and ultraviolet exposure. Lots of good things about it. Now, lycopene actually is a uh, uh, naturally occurs in a tomato on a vine in a chemical form that our body doesn't absorb that well. So if you pick a tomato off the vine, and you cut it up and you throw it into a salad, it might taste great. It's got some vitamin C in it. It's a great source of hydration and great flavors, okay? Especially if it's like a homegrown heirloom type of tomato. But you're not going to get the like, you're not going to get as much lycopene. You're probably only going to get maybe 20% of the lycopene that's in there. But you want it, like for me, I want to get as much of the good stuff as I can. So here's what research has found. If you wanted to convert that chemical structure of lycopene into a form that you can absorb better, your body can avidly absorb, what you want to do is you want to heat the tomato like in a pan and with the heat will change the chemical structure from a form your body doesn't absorb that well into a form that your body avidly absorbs, loves to absorb it. Now you go from 20% absorption to 80% absorption. You flipped, a, you flipped it around completely, upended that equation completely. Now you're really absorbing it. Now, here's one additional thing though. How would you heat a tomato in a pan? You put heat it in water or nothing? No, not really. You put a little bit of olive oil in it. And why is that? And, and, and it's because lycopene is a substance that we call fat soluble. It's a lipid. It loves to dissolve into fats. So a little bit of olive oil in tomatoes on a pan, sauteed, so it's soft, change of chemical structure, flavors are really great now. And you have that. Now when you uh, eat that tomato sauce sauteed in olive oil, the oil, the olive oil with the lycopene is carried into your body even more efficiently mm -hmm. than if it were cooked in water. And so again, that's an ex that's just one example of thousands of how oils with fat soluble foods. By the way, if you didn't want to uh, look at olive oil, here's another common snack in, in the United States anyways, kind of tearing a page book from Latin American cuisine. You have these tortilla chips and then you wind up actually having a salsa and guacamole. The salsa, salsa is often sort of stewed down tomatoes, uh, cooked down tomatoes, served at room temperature or chilled. And then the guacamole is just avocado that's been smashed up. Now, avocado has a lot of healthy fats in it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fat soluble veggie. It's actually quite uh, nutritious. Uh, and remarkably, uh, people eating avocado actually shrink their waistline because actually, it, even though they're eating fat, it actually makes you, it burns down harmful fat. It's a whole other story that we had. But if you have guacamole, avocado with tomatoes, you get more lycopene. And so that happens to be kind of a popular snack uh, in yeah. the United States. When you eat avocados, their healthy fats help regulate your metabolism and promote fat burning. Avocados are rich in monounsaturated fats, which are known to increase the rate at which fat is burned in the body. These fats can help reduce bad cholesterol levels while increasing good cholesterol, contributing to overall heart health. Additionally, the fiber content in avocados helps you feel full longer, reducing the urge to snack on unhealthy foods. The combination of avocado with lycopene-rich tomatoes is particularly effective. Lycopene has been linked to reduced levels of oxidative stress and inflammation, both of which can interfere with the body's ability to burn fat efficiently. By incorporating both avocados and tomatoes into your diet, you create a synergistic effect that boosts your body's fat-burning capabilities while providing a range of other health benefits. This makes avocado-tomato combinations a powerful choice for those looking to improve their overall health and manage their weight. Next food we're gonna talk about, mushrooms are great for burning down harmful body fat. Now, how does that happen? How does a lowly, lowly white button mushroom do this? Well, it turns out that mushrooms um, are kind of soft, but they're pretty powerful. They contain a natural substance called beta-D-glucan. 
G-L-U-C-A-N, beta-D-glucan, it's a soluble fiber. And you know what that soluble fiber does? It actually gets down and feeds your gut bacteria. Uh, beta-glucan also turns on your brown fat to help down burn down harmful white visceral fat. Uh, and beta-glucan also lowers inflammation. So again, mushrooms are have these multi-pronged uh, effects to help you burn down body fat. And let's talk about mushrooms for a second, because I love mushrooms. I like to cook. Um, I love eating mushrooms. Uh, the beta-glucan is found in fancy mushrooms like porcini, all right, but uh, morels. But beta-glucan is even found in that lowly, lowly white button mushroom, all right? So if you go to the grocery store and you buy white button mushrooms, they're very inexpensive. What do we normally do, right? We take them home, maybe wash them off a little bit. Sometimes there's a little bit dirt on them. I highly recommend that. Um, and then we cut off the stem. And I used to throw away the stem and just eat the cap, cook with the cap. But I'm telling you, the beta-glucan is in the cap of the mushroom, all right? So you've got good stuff in the cap, but the stem has twice as much of the beta-D glucan, all right? So eat the stem, uh, eat the stem as well as the cap. If you're not sure what to do with the stem, you can saute them or you can make them into a soup. Just put them into a blender. Uh, uh, you can actually even put it into a smoothie, kind of a, uh, as, a, as part of, it'll give it a little bit earthy uh, flavor to it. Um, but I will tell you that, uh, um, or put into a soup, but uh, beta-glucan in the mushrooms. So white button mushrooms, um, uh, shiitake mushrooms, uh, maitake mushrooms, um, uh, oyster mushrooms, portobello, uh, uh, all criminy, all great culinary mushrooms. Now, how come I haven't mentioned the other types of mushrooms like lion's mane, uh, uh, reishi, et cetera, cordyceps? Because those are medicinal mushrooms, and I'm talking about foods that fight body fat through culinary mushrooms. You should use um, to fight fat, you should actually eat the culinary mushrooms. Another pro tip that you might not know about is that mushrooms uh, are a source of vitamin D. Vitamin D is really important for uh, immune health and uh, bone health, uh, a lot of other uh, healthy parts and most people around the world, uh, especially in the Western world, don't get enough vitamin D. So we take vitamin D supplements. Um, uh, but I can tell you that mushrooms are one of the few foods that actually are a source of vitamin D. So, you know, the human skin gets vitamin, can make vitamin D, but we got to go outside in the sunshine. All right. Same deal with mushrooms. If you want to have your mushroom, which is a source of vitamin D, make more vitamin D, you know what you do? Take that white button mushroom, slice it, uh, longitudinally, lengthwise, all right? And put all those flat pieces on a plate and stick it in your kitchen in front of the window with the sun coming in. And when mushrooms get a suntan through the window, guess what? They make more vitamin D, just like human skin. So a little pro tip, if you want your mushrooms to do a little bit more work for you, in addition to uh, burning down harmful body fat and f um, fueling your gut health and lowering inflammation, you want your mushrooms that actually give you a, a source of vitamin D, um, slice them open and give them some sunshine as a way to actually do that as well. Um, uh, by the way, another comment about mushrooms. I, I recommend uh, you to cook mushrooms if you're actually going to eat them rather than eat them raw. And never, ever go out and forage your own mushrooms unless you're already an expert forager. Don't let the experts do it because there's a lot of mushrooms out there that are actually poisonous. Um, they'll kill you. So don't do it. Go to the market, go to the store, rely on the mushroom forager to get you the stuff that's the, the good stuff uh, that's good, actually good for you. Mushrooms can help with fat burning due to their unique nutritional profile and bioactive compounds. They are low in calories and rich in protein and fiber, which help increase satiety and reduce overall calorie intake. Mushrooms also contain compounds like beta-glucans, which have been shown to influence fat metabolism and improve insulin sensitivity. Improved insulin sensitivity helps the body use glucose more effectively, reducing the likelihood of storing excess fat. Carrots contain a huge amount of dietary fiber and some useful bioactives, carotenoids, carotenoids named after carrots or carrots named after carotenoids, these orange uh, uh, chemicals, natural chemicals that actually make the carrot orange, uh, along with the dietary fiber, uh, uh, stimulates your metabolism. And one of the things that it can actually do is to trigger 
your body's a type of fat called brown fat. And brown fat basically acts like a space heater. You turn it on click by eating carrots and um, it'll ramp up and fire up. And as it's burning, creating heat, it's actually drawing down the fuel that it needs to create that heat from your harmful body fat, your visceral fat. So your brown fat fires up after you eat carrots and it steals the fuel that it needs from uh, harmful visceral fat and then it burns down your harmful uh, body fat. I didn't used to be a fan of carrots, right? It's in the salad bar, you sprinkle some on for a little bit of color, but actually carrots are absolutely delicious to eat. If you wanna roast carrots, uh, they are absolutely uh, delicious. Um, now, I'm not telling you to put sprinkle sugar on it, but you can actually drizzle a little bit of maple, maple syrup on it if you want to give it just a little bit of caramelization, not too much, and you'll get this beautiful, nice uh, flavor. Uh, and uh, it's great for stews uh, that you can actually make uh, as well. So and a carrot soup, carrot with ginger the soup, what an amazing thing to, com uh, to combine. Now, a lot of people don't know this about carrots, but the original carrots uh, were not orange. Can you guess what color they were? Purple. The original carrots were purple carrots, and you'll actually see these uh, in the market uh, these days. They call them heirloom carrots, or you see them in farmer's markets. Um, they're kind of gnarly looking, actually. They can be, but they're beautiful and purple on the outside. That's the color on the outside, kind of their skin deep purple. And then if you break it open and you look on the inside of it, you'll see that it's yellow on the inside. All right, purple on the outside, yellow on the inside. This is actually what the original native carrot was like. Now, in Europe, they act, farmers uh, uh, started to celebrate the, uh, uh, the freedom fighter, uh, who uh, William of Orange, who actually helped to free the Netherlands from Spanish rule. And William of Orange, uh, to celebrate it, they actually started to breed the carrot to be orange. And that's really uh, the backstory of why carrots became orange. And that's what we see uh, today. Um, the benefit of the original carrot, purple, anthocyanins, also good for your metabolism. Uh, so carrots are one of my favorite uh, uh, foods for fighting body fat. Thank you for joining me today as we uncovered the surprising truth about fat burning and explored effective strategies to enhance your metabolic health. Remember to incorporate these top five fat burning foods into your diet and stay consistent with healthy eating habits. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with others who may benefit from it. Stay tuned for more insights on how to optimize your health through the power of nutrition. Until next time, here's to a healthier, happier you.